Good morning. Hope everyone's doing great. It's going to be a busy Saturday here. Got this this morning, then um, a preschool soccer game, a two-year-old birthday party. We got all kinds of things going on today. So hopefully you're busy and doing well as 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 well. That would be wonderful. So as as always, um, we'll see you in the chat room. Um, ask your questions, get your answers um, here as we as we go live. Uh, this morning, I want to take care of a, a few things before we get started with our our lesson today. Um, this week, I got an email from a, a lady named Jerry, and she. Uh, shared a project with me that was from about a year ago when we talked about thread painting and um, also uh, thread painting and painting on fabric and the different ways that you can do that and I wanted to share her project with you it's it's very sweet um, absolutely wonderful and good job on that Jerry but wanted to share that with you this morning so uh, there there you go from a year ago and some things that you can do with you know the techniques that we will um, you know share and and present here on the, the live session. So thank you, Jerry, for sharing that with me. I appreciate it. Then the second thing that I want to talk about is something that Bernina is uh, doing in the quilt show, actually the quilt show, and that is they are giving away a circular embroidery attachment. And this is about a 78.99, uh, uh, well, it's not about, it is a 78.99 um, value uh, cost-wise. So, and um, let's just talk a little bit about what it does. And we can do that with Alex's smiling face. Uh, there and you can see that uh, it's not very clear but it's as clear as I, I could get it this morning on my machine it it embroiders but it is it you don't need the embroidery attachment which is kind of nice it gives you decorative stitches you so you use the decorative stitches on your machine except that it um, stitches them in a in a circle and you can use your alphabet you can use any of your decorative stitches in using this uh, foot on your machine and the machines that it fits is the bernina 5.5 millimeter and the nine millimeter machines so those are the ones that this particular foot so if you have those machines this is a wonderful tool i have it i've been practicing uh, I don't think that I'm that good as, as Alex is showing you quite yet, but um, it's pretty relatively easy to, um, to use. And so how do you enter to win one of these? Go to your Facebook page for a post about it. Click on the entry link, and uh, Kristen's going to post the link in the chat when we when we go live here which we already have and so she's got the link um, that she'll be putting up there and the last thing that you need to know is you must enter to win one of these uh, attachments by uh, Monday on the 26th and the winner will be announced on Wednesday the 28th so if you are interested in winning one of these so that you can do uh, circular stitching and I've used it for quilting that's that's mainly what I have used it for I haven't tried a lot in terms of the stitches I have done the satin stitch which um, you saw there um, with Alex but here is the attachment again it goes onto your machine quite easily um, it, it works it works really well and uh, not too much of a you know a learning curve if you will on that so enter win a attachment a new foot for your well it's not really a foot it's an attachment so an attachment for your machine and it's about a 79 dollar uh, price point so that's worth entering and and getting that so there you go 
Now I want to talk about what we're going to be doing today on the handmade quilt. So I, I would really like to know how you did for those of you who are hand quilting. So if you want to share that in the chat box is that we, um, I, I read through, you know, your, your chats, uh, the things that you said, and I think we got about a half and half in terms of working with only hand sewing. And that's wonderful. I think that's a great challenge um, for anyone. And I wish my hands would let me do it because um, I'd like to, to kind of tackle that again. I haven't done that since I was a teenager. So then uh, we've got others who are going to be using the machine entirely. And so we've really got about a third, a third, a third, you know, in terms of mixing it up and using. So, um, you know, using the different forms you know, with hand quilting and machine quilting and mixing the two. And they mix just great because I have been doing that as I make the blocks, share with you the hand, the hand stitching, and then go back and work on um, with the machine. So it, they, they really do intersect very easily on that. So if you could share how you're doing with the hand and if there's any questions, please, please, please put them in the chat box so we can work on that. A question came up this week, and that was that the book itself does not have the sizes of the blocks nor how to cut them because she is working entirely from templates. So last week, I don't believe that I shared some of that um, very clearly in terms of how do I find out what size these blocks are and how do I get them get them made. And if I'm not doing the hand piecing and working with templates. So let's drop down to my table here. And I want to talk a little bit about how I'm going about doing that. I've got, just for an example here, both a half square triangle and a quarter square triangle. So this is the template that you would cut from, you know, template plastic or um, a heavy stock paper. And so when you're looking at a half square triangle and this template, basically you are cutting the um, a square in half to get the half square triangle. So what I do, and let me see where my, there it is, my ruler went. So if this is the half square triangle and I put that on there, you can see hopefully that, um, that half square triangle fits right over that template uh, design that's on here. So if you'll notice from this end to this end is the, the, the amount of square that you would need to cut if you're not using a template and if you're doing this by machine. So I simply put my ruler on the template and if you can see it goes to three and seven eighths so that I know that this is going to finish at three inches I need to cut it you know add that magic number seven eighths to get my three inch finished block so there you go three and seven eighths so I cut a square and I did not use a template on this because with a half square triangle, it was very easy to cut, um, you know, a square and half. So it's three and seven eighths. So you would measure along the long side of that and you'll get the, um, the amount that you need uh, to cut if you were cutting it with your rotary cutter. Same thing with a quarter square triangle. A quarter square triangle is basically, um, a quarter of a square and so you're gonna have when you finish you you cut a square in di diagonally twice to get the template for a square quarter square triangle so again I put my ruler and this ruler is not quite big enough um, I don't have my um, longer or bigger one right here but you can see that it is going to come out to be five and a fourth. 
because there's a there's my quarter inch um, left over here. So um, this is five and a quarter. And that when you're cutting quarter square triangles and you want to end up in this case with a four inch block, you're going to add one and one fourth. That's that other magic number. So the magic number for half square triangles is seven eighths and the magic number for a quarter square triangle is one and a fourth. So if this is going to finish at four inches, which she does not tell you that in the book, it is simply by measuring this and coming up with the five and a fourth that I can take it back down um, because I know the magic numbers. So those two magic numbers are well worth writing down if you did not know them already because a quarter um, square triangle is um, cutting a square diagonally twice. So that is how I am getting the um, measurements for the two blocks that we're making. So on the half square triangles, what I, I generally do is exactly what I was showing you here. I draw the line on the back of my lightest fabric I sew down each side one quarter inch, cut that in half, and I will have two quarter square triangles. Okay, so that is how I made these two um, by machine, um, drawing a line down the center, stitching a quarter inch on each half, and cutting it apart on my marked line. Um, now, I use the Sew Steady mat, and so I do not um, necessarily use the, um, I don't necessarily mark it, I marked it today so that you could see it online. Let me check and see if there's any questions. Uh, all right, there we go. I don't see any at the moment, so we're going to move on to taking our half square triangle and we're going to um, stitch it. Let me make sure that I have my needle ready. Um, again, there's a couple of things that you can do to work on. Let me move this book. It's kind of busy underneath of there. It makes it a little bit hard to see. So to do my half square triangle, one of the things that I can do is use the sew tight tiles. These are really, really wonderful, especially when you're um, working with English paper piecing and stuff. They, they work really, really well here. Um, or you could drop a pin in there. I tend to... Um, not always like a pin when I'm hand stitching like this because invariably I'll stick myself and I use the very fine needles so I stick myself quite a bit. And then the, the last thing that you can do, we talked about this um, a few weeks back and that is the acorn um, precision glue um, that they have and you can drop um, a little bit of that in the corner. You do not want to get that I must have let this sit open and I do that sometimes, I forget. And then I have to run a needle um, down. So I'm just trying to open up that um, the top so I can get a drop of glue out so you can see that. So I'm putting a uh, just a drop of glue right there at the end on both sides of this and making sure that they're aligned so that um, and I'm going to remove this for right now since I've got the glue in there and I went before I tap it with the iron and I recommend you know using your iron and drying that glue just a, just a wee bit um, and this end I didn't get quite there because it does move on you unless you wait and I'm impatient and I don't want to wait. So 
again with the hand piecing I go up I would say about a quarter of an inch and come up from the bottom because I don't want that knot in the corner where I'm going to bring you know several um, pieces of fabric together and sew that there so I'm going to back stitch a couple of stitches and now I'm going taking my needle directly into my quarter inch seam on that coming up I take you know where where I come to with corners and stuff I do take my time a little a little bit with that and um, work on it so now I can you know stitch you know three or four um, of my about eight inches up an eighth of an inch apart um, as I sew on here when I do that then I go back and take a back stitch and then start again with my stitching and the reason that I do that it locks that stitch in place it also uh, saves me from having to, to tie knots um, because it's locking it in and so again a back stitch and then I move forward doing that running um, kind of a running stitch um, it's really it's what I call it because I think that's primarily what it is and my thread knotted a little bit on me so you do want to pay attention to that because um, you, you really don't want that to happen and so all I'm doing is about an eighth of an inch and I'm running that back back stitch coming forward and moving again now I want to end just a little bit before the end of that uh, because I again I don't want the knot there and I want it secure so I'm going to take a back stitch another back stitch till I get to the corner come up right in that corner and then I am you know going to take that and a couple of stitches back so that I can um, put in a knot and I don't know that it really matters which side you put the knot in um, but I'm going to I, I say this is the back um, it's probably because that's where I started um, so anyway I'm going to um, put a knot into the back side of that I back stitched so I've locked those stitches again and now I can press that seam and I will press it again you know very much like I always do I make sure that that's nice and flat um, actually if you, this you would only press it at this point if you are doing a combination or you are you know doing machine entirely because with hand stitching you actually don't want to um, press it at this point because you're going to be coming up underneath of those of those pieces and so it works a little nicer if you don't actually um, press it so I'm I'm just going to get that glue undone out of the back of that and I have my quarter inch with my quarter inch seam you know left open so I can sew the next piece on and you know it looks great and in terms of you know whether or not you um, hand stitch it or you machine stitch it it pretty much um, will look the same on that so let me see if there's some questions right now in regards to um, 
the hand stitching. Okay, they have, you know, the, the things that I'm using in the store. So if you, if you feel that you need any of that, please um, go with that. Um, oh, thank you, Bridget, for the Epsom salt. I've done that too. And um, it, it helps. <laughs> uh, short applique needles. Yeah, I, I use the straw needles um, or applique needles. And... Um, and hand sewing without using the knot. Yes, I do. Um, I can do that. And I, you do it basically the way I showed you. I add the knot just because it makes me feel better. And because uh, the back stitch does lock it. But um, I appreciate um, you saying that, Darlene, um, with that. Now I want to talk about our other uh, block. And that is the hourglass block. And in terms of the hourglass, you're using those quarter square triangles. Now, there are a number of different ways that you can sew a quarter square triangle. One of them is, you know, cutting a, you know, a square on the diagonal twice using those quarter square triangles um, along with your other fabric that you're going to be using uh, and sew them all together. And you would have these half square uh, units like th like this over here all right and so so the two uh, triangles together and you get that there is you can do it by hand you can do it by machine uh, whichever way that you want to do it I am going to share with you how I generally sew my quarter square triangles together this right here I want to share with you when you cut a square on a diagonal these sides right here are going to have you're, you're cutting on the bias so they're going to stretch so you really do need to be able to press and not do any ironing when you're working with the fabric you're, you're going to need to be careful because it will stretch and warp its way out of shape and you're in your block when it's completed uh, doesn't always um, measure exactly right when you're getting this and you're pressing you know to the left or to the right uh, you're pressing again and you've got exposed bias out there and so oftentimes we can get you know those um, it, it kind of looks like a half circle or a little bit of a rainbow out there so work carefully if that's the way that you are going to um, to do that what I do is I take my fabric and I work with half square triangles and I sew all of that in prior to um, pressing it and I'll come out with my quarter square triangle um, like this. So I start with making two half squares and we're gonna we're gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna sew th down this way to begin with. I want to secure this so it doesn't move. I put pins a little bit of ways uh, away from where my sewing line is so I don't you know mess with that. And you know I I cut these exactly five and a fourth. so I don't really have much of a margin of error. in fact, really none at all. Now if you want to do this and to cut them down, cut your square a little bit bigger than five and a fourth, um, add a quarter of an inch or a half an inch, whatever. But I chose to um, simply, I, I cut it exactly five and a fourth. So I need to be careful. So what I'm going to do is sew a, um, a scant quarter inch uh, rather than a full quarter inch like I normally would. So let me drop the camera. Um, leaving it open to, to attach the other block. Can you show me? 
um, you're just leaving your, your seam allowance um, open. Let me find that block again. You stop at the, well, I will try to find it. Where, where did it disappear to? I will show you as soon as I find, oh, here it is. You only sew to the end of your seam, um, Camille, and then this is open so that when you are putting the next block onto it, um, you can go underneath and come out on the other side at the same spot. And this stays then, your, your seam allowance is open. You don't sew across your seam allowance in hand stitching. And I showed that um, last week on um, the session. So that's what I was talking about that. And what block, book am I using for the blocks? That book is called The Handmade Quilt. It's a skill building block, uh, book and it is written by Carolyn Forster. So this is the quilt we are making and it's the handmade quilt and her directions and everything is all about how to do it completely entirely by hand. So let's move to the machine at this point and let's um, sew these blocks. Um, when I'm starting, especially like on a um, point, I definitely always use a, a leader piece of fabric. And as you can, as you can see, I'm just a, a one um, hair over, you know, one thread length over this line because I'm doing a scant quarter inch. So it's like a thread or two because I, I want to give myself and make sure that I am stitching completely um, and I will get an accurate block when I'm when I'm completed. So that's what I'm doing at, at this point. All right. And so I finish off with a, another strip. That way I don't get those knots. I don't get those bird nests on the back of my, my sewing, um, that kind of thing. All right. So again, and I have marked the back simply so you can see what I'm doing. But if you have, here, let me get a little bit further before I show you. Um, if you have a so steady mat, they have the markings. This is where your needle is coming down. This is your quarter inch line on the side, and it's very accurate if you are following that. I am going just slightly in of that line, so I, my point is going on the inside of that because I, I do want that scant quarter inch. And you simply follow that, then you don't have to do any marking. And I can tell you that I love that part of it because I totally did not like um, having to mark everything. It took so much time as far as I was concerned. All right, so I have now um, sewn um, my first line. And now I'm going to cut it in half. And I live dangerously. I just follow the line. And now I have two half square triangles. And what I'm going to do again is I, I'm setting my seam. I am hitting that so that it's nice and flat. And then you simply set your iron down. Um, there is no ironing. And when I pick it up and set it down, I'm actually picking that up. I'm not sliding it. Um, it looks like it on camera. I've watched it and, it, and it does look like I'm sliding it, but I'm actually lifting um, the iron up a bit because I really don't want that. So I'm just hitting where my, sew, where my sewn seam is, and I get it nice and flat. So now I have two half-square triangles. And 
what I'm going to do is put them together this way. I'm, I'm going to line them up and I'm going to be working very carefully to make sure that I get uh, those seams tight together all the way down. Again, I'm going to pin it just a little bit away. I do the same thing on the other side, making sure that um, that center is nice and locked. And if you're on camera, you're going to see that I missed that point just a little bit. So it's good that I, I used a scant quarter um, quarter inch um and I'm checking, double checking that center. And now I'm going to sew it again um, the same way that I did before. I sew it as though I was making a half square triangle. And as you can see, I can use my Sew Steady mat right there and keep that moving right along. Again, being um, brave here, I'm just going to cut straight through the center of that. And then, and I'm sorry that I didn't move the camera so you could see me cut through that, but I basically just cut the block in half again on the line. So when I open that up, I now have my hourglass block um, quarter square triangles and I didn't have to worry so much about that bias. So let me um, share with you a little bit um, how and if you were hand stitching it you would do this part the same way. I'm going to break that thread in the middle. I am going to use the the nose of my iron just to press that center in and then um, I'm going to lay that down and this one is going, I'm pressing it flat to that side and this side goes this way. Um, so I'm going to press that as well, getting that center flat. So I just want to press and then now I want to show you how I work um, in terms of getting that quarter inch. I'm going to trim this block up and I suggest that you would do the same as you are working on your blocks. I want this to be four and a half and what I'm doing at this point in time is I am lining up my 45 degree angle on my block. All right. And you know, that scant quarter inch did me well, be, except for that one little bad corner. And I've got a tiny little um, nuance there. But you will see that my four and a half inch point is here and I ran that completely up my seam um, so that I know that as I trim those bunny ears off, um, get those things out of the way, and then I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing again. 
So again, I'm lining my 45 degree line up through the middle of that. And I have my quarter square triangle um, completed and it's four and a half inches square. Um, looks great in terms of that. So there, let me check the questions again. Um, All right, I don't see any at that point. Um, so let's go back to the book. I am going to be uh, leading a retreat in Michigan next week. And so I will, um, we will not have class on next Saturday. So I wanna give you a couple of things to work on this uh, for the next uh, two weeks. These two, you know, finish up these two blocks and then I, we're going to move on to our next two, which are very similar. We're going to move on to our shoe fly, and we're going to move on to our churn dash. And, you know, if, if you want to go ahead and cut them, I've shared with you how to, you know, to measure and be able to do that with your rotary cutter if you wish or you can make the templates as she has shown you so we're going to be working with shoe fly and we are going to be working with churn dash um, the next time when we come back but what i would suggest that you do is if you go into the back of the book she has you know some color inspiration different things that you can do here is the quilt done in a little bit more pastel colors and things um, depending on how you're going to uh, tackle your quilt in terms of fabrics if you have the kit we're working with the blues um, and that um, you know and, and those are listed you know, basically here but i want to take you to the front of the book and have you look at it and one of the things that I find to be helpful is that I really looked at this pattern not all patterns are necessarily well balanced and I'm looking for when I look at the front of this book I, my eye sees the whole quilt if I if my eye is drawn to a certain spot a certain area then I know I need to work with that just a little bit so that I see the whole quilt as opposed to something is glaringly um, you know out of place whatever um, you want to call it so I'm gonna look at this and what I would suggest that you do is if you have extra time after your hand sewing is completed you've completed your first four blocks of you know that we've that we've done so far is start to choose your fabric lay it out if you're going to use this layout, you can put this quilt together however you want to. Even make it bigger, make it smaller, um, one block of each, however you choose to do that. And But lay out your fabrics and, and start to choose uh, next week before we get started on the next blocks. Which fabrics you're going to put where? Lay them in the general vicinity, you know, in squares, whatever. Uh, you don't necessarily need to cut them out, but get a feel. Do you, is, it, is it evenly distributed in terms of value and weight? And I love the fact that she has thrown in these fabrics that have a touch of brightness, this yellow here, some of these reds. Uh, it just gives it that extra spark. And if you took the... Um, yellow say for this corner if you took that yellow away my eye is then drawn into this kind of angle right here because the reds and the yellows are very bright but when you put that yellow back again in that corner and it's evenly distributed so your eye is following the whole quilt 
then it's perfect. It works wonderfully and it adds just a touch of brightness and, and you know, it's really very nice in terms of that. So for next week, I will not be here. There will be no class, but I would strongly suggest that you kind of work ahead in terms of fabric choices and getting those together and ready for what you want to do for next week. And then we'll tackle our next couple of blocks. These first, you know, um, six blocks are fairly simple. But then we start to add, you know, some of those techniques that you may not have seen before in your quilting or that may be new to you and that are a little bit different in terms of hand quilting as well as machine quilting. And as I, as I shared with you before, I've looked at, you know, I've, obviously I've looked at all the blocks and kind of made a game plan and have already played with some of them. And um, I will even throw in some applique. And into what I'm doing, but you certainly do not have to do that. Uh, it depends on how you are going to put your quilt together in terms of that. So for that, uh, I hope that the questions were answered. Let me just double check. Um, thank you, Julie. All right. And so Kristen has definitely posted up there, uh, you know, all of the, the links for the things that I have been using on the show. Uh, be sure to sign up for the free circular uh, attachment to the machine. That, I mean, that's a wonderful tool and works great. And um, it's not, it's very easy to use, actually. I was surprised. Um, would like more information regarding the book. The Quilt Show has the book and you can order it from them. Let me just drop down and share with you again. It's called The Handmade Quilt. It's a skill building sampler. And but it she has it explained in the front of the book. It is all how to do the hand stitching and the tools that you need to do that. And then each page has a template that you would create and cut your fabric from. And uh, there are no sizes given in here, but again, and the book is simply um, all the blocks until we get to the very end, and then it gets into, um, you know, putting the sections together and then finishing off the quilt with the borders and then um, completely hand quilting the whole the whole thing. So it's The Handmade Quilt by Carolyn Forster and it is available in the store. So you can check that link that uh, Kristen put up there and you can order it from them. I don't know how long it would take. Um, yeah, the, the postage I know is, is very high. Uh, so hopefully you can get that in Australia. And I will be doing, um, you know, I will be sharing with you most of the time, you know, sizes and different things. But when we get to the template parts, that's going to be the, the hard part in terms of that. So I do hope that you will be able to purchase this in Australia. So um, Kathleen has asked, where in Michigan? I will be in a small town called Lawton at right outside of Kalamazoo so that's where I will be and um, you guys have a wonderful two weeks and I really look forward to seeing you back then and we'll tackle um, the next techniques in terms of um, the shoe fly and I already forgot the other block and so have a wonderful time and uh, we'll see you next time bye